Very good evening to you and welcome to Primetime News, coming to you live and direct from the News First Center here in Colombo. I'm Sandro Ferdinando. And I'm Rachna Farooq. News First and Sirius TV have bagged awards at the 11th Raigam Tilly Awards that is currently taking place tonight in Colombo. Uh, details coming up on the news bulletin, but here's a look at the headlines tonight. Cabinet approves new electoral system comprising of 237 parliamentary seats. Preferential vote system abolished. 15 billion rupee commission obtained in a deal over the Norachole power plant exposed. Government takes responsibility over the security of the former defense secretary. CID questions MP Namal Raj Paksa for five hours. Minister of Foreign Affairs says he's ready to face the Geneva sessions. September Masim Pratama. A group including the deputy speaker trapped in a crane for several hours. President Maithripala Sirisena says that people of all communities in the country working together is the best foundation for reconciliation between communities. The President made this statement addressing the 75th anniversary celebrations at St. Anthony's Balikama Vidyalaya, Colombo 3. The celebratory plaque constructed for the school's 75th Golden Jubilee was opened by President Sirisena. Presidents of the ceremony got on the way thereafter. Yahapa Samaja Gurnegi make Esandaha Hundam Madhyastani Tamai Pasala. The best establishment to building a good society is a person's school, church, or any other place of worship. It is in these places that a person can fulfill his or her primary responsibilities by creating a proper mentality. A government of a country can take many policy decisions and provide guidance, but the implementation of all these things lie in the hands of the next tier. The guidance and advice provided by the clergy who are the topmost tier in the society is very important. Uh, speaking at a meeting, a field marshal uh, Sarat Fonseca said that he does not approve politics that is based on race and religion. The first meeting organized by the Democratic Party in the Eastern Province was held in Kalkuda this morning. Jati Mata Aga Mata. We do not approve politics carried out based on race and religion. The Democratic Party won 700,000 votes for President Maitri Palasiri Sena. If Maitri Palasiri Sena had contested the election with the United National Party alone, he wouldn't have been able to win. We do not approve the system and the way the previous president treated other communities. I rendered my services together with the officers and soldiers under my command in order to protect the people and not harass anyone or seek vengeance. The government is trying to serve justice to the people today. However, the rogues are still within the two main political parties. We expect the president and the prime minister to get rid of these rogues and cleanse their parties and rule the country. An investor filed a complaint with the Kolpati police today after alleged irregularities said to have taken place at the Colombo Stock Exchange in the year 2011. Appearing on behalf of the complainant, attorney at law Udara Muhammadiramge elaborated further. An investor filed a complaint with the Kolpati police today. I accompanied him. The complaints noted that there were discrepancies with the shares of four companies in 2011. This is a crime committed in violation of Section 51 of the Securities and Exchange Commission of Sri Lanka Act. This is a crime. The companies in question are Citrus Leisure, Colombo Lands, Kalpitya Beach Resort and Image Vice Private Limited. The complaint has been filed against the directors of these companies. The complainants request the police to conduct an impartial investigation and take legal action. In the complaint, the complainants had noted that Image Vice Private Limited had earned over 400 million rupees in an improper manner during a period of 12 days. This is a violation of Rules 12 and 13 under the Securities and Exchange Commission of Sri Lanka Act. <laughs> Information comes to light over alleged irregularities that had taken place at the Columbus Stock Exchange in 2010, 2011 and 2012. SEC investigates Kalpitya Beach Resort PLC for 283.5 million rupees raised through shares and not constructing the beach resort. The price of a warrant of reef comber or citrus leisure plunged to 10 cents. 
price of a warrant of Lanka hospitals increased on the 17th of August 2011 in an unusual manner. For your attention. Developing Story brought to you by Sears of TV and News First have won awards at the 11th Raigam Telly Awards. The awards were for the best political discussion program, best sports program, best news reporting and best Tamil news presenter. They are by the face-to-face -face program produced by News First with former Secretary of Defense Gota Biraja Paksa was awarded the best political discussion program while the finals of Super Fighter aired on Sears TV was presented with the award for the best sports program. News First, Lakna Mandi was presented the award for best news reporting for a report on the media about the landslide. News First, Jeffrey Jabadarshan was presented with the award for the best Tamil news presenter. News First, Rajendran Kogulnath was presented with the award for best Tamil program presenter. Meanwhile, Sirius Superstar was presented the award for the best reality show. The Rai Gam Tele Awards are currently taking place at the Nelu Kokana Mahindraj Paksa Theatre. A Minister of Foreign Affairs, Amangala Samaravira, announced in Parliament today that he held discussions with the diaspora. When you say diaspora, some say they are Tamil terrorists. Officially, as we know, the diaspora comprises of almost 1.5 million persons. They are hard-working and responsible persons in those countries. They can be Sinhalese, Tamil or Muslims. They are the Sri Lankan diaspora that loves the country and brings respect to the country's good name. As the Minister of Foreign Affairs, I have met with the Tamil diaspora on three or four occasions and not just once. I have held discussions. There are several extremist elements in that. However, a majority have agreed to work within a united and undivided Sri Lanka which rejects violence. At the end of this year, my ministry will be organizing an event for the diaspora. <laughs> I wish to ask from the Foreign Minister, have you reached any decision over the domestic mechanism that you hope to implement? Point number 93 in the 100-day program clearly states that we will not allow any international interferences. We also promise to the people through the pledge that we will create a domestic mechanism in order to address any alleged human rights violations against Sri Lanka and any alleged war crimes. I believe that we will be able to make a statement on that mechanism before September. September a parliamentarian, Nama Rajapaksha, provided a statement to the Criminal Investigations Department after being questioned for around five hours today. MP Nama Rajapaksa arrived at the Criminal Investigations Department at 9 a.m. this morning to provide his statement. The police said that the parliamentarian was summoned to the CID to record a statement over the incident where a personal bodyguard of MP Nama Rajapaksa had entered a meeting attended by President Maitripala Sirisena with a firearm. I suppose I may have to come here for many more days to come under this good governance. But we'll see, because I wasn't summoned for another date. Various allegations were leveled over the recent past. But I hope to prove my innocence in court. Neither me or my father will ever leave the Sri Lanka Freedom Party. The MPs requested us to seek nominations from the Sri Lanka Freedom Party. We all submitted nomination papers. The other thing is, do not forget that Mahinda Rajapaksa still functions as an advisor in the Sri Lanka Freedom Party. Meanwhile, Chief Government Whip Minister Gayantha Kaunathilaka informed Parliament today that the government will take responsibility over the security of former Defence Secretary Gotabe Rajapaksa. Minister Kaunathilaka made this statement as a response to a question raised by MP Susanta Punch Nilame. The Chief Government Whip in his response said that according to the intelligence sources, there are no threats against the life of Gotabe Rajapaksa. Minister Kaunathilaka went on to say that, however, Former Defence Secretary Gotabe Rajapaksa has been provided with a security detail of eight army officers and 50 soldiers.
Former President Chandrika Bandaranaika Kumaratunga revealed today that the previous government had obtained a sum of 15 billion rupees as a commission from the Norachole power plant. The former president made this revelation during a press conference convened at the Ministry of Finance today. I am saying this with absolute responsibility. This is not rumours, this is not gossip. The companies came very happily thinking that uh, they are coming asking to review when are, you know, what is the progress scale and they had said I want 50% of the cost of the project as commission. This was told to me by a high up Chinese person. I said F you mean 15? And they said no madam, 50%. And obviously the, the contractor had, uh, one by one they had spoken to the contractors, this North Chole contractor had uh, said we can't give you that because our profit is less than 25%. We can give you 3%. And they were told, then get out. So they went. They were very insulted. They went away. And for two and a half years, the project was closed. All six projects were closed. Like the Nelum Pokunam was one. Hammadra report was signed by me. The Colombo Katunayaka Expressway was started by my government in the year 2000. It was stopped in 2002 after the change of government. I don't know why. And thereafter, we restarted it in 2004 and signed the uh, signed the, it was half done, eh? 2001 it was part done, then 2005 again we signed and then it started off. Finally the <coughs> finance ministry people kept going to China and pleading with them to come and restart the projects and they had said no we can't pay the kind of commissions you are asking for, uh, your government is asking for and also we were insulted badly and told to get out. You know the Chinese are a very proud people so they said in the back. Until what a plead color, plead color, they, they came back but they were not companies that were as good as the ones we brought. They were not companies that had the experience there, like the uh, earlier companies. They did not have the financial uh, strength like the earlier companies. And you know what happened there after the North Chole, caught fire six times, broke down uh, what ten times uh, and all that. And it's still I understand is not working properly. But the most interesting thing is that it was re-signed 510 million US dollars. 240 acre, 510 Nuna. I signed that 280 million US dollars. So half of that will be 140. So 280 plus 140 is 280. 280. 280. Sorry. 280. So half of 280, 140. 280 plus 140 is 420. Then why was it 510? Because others also had said, So it became 510. And who pays it? Our people. So the commission was worth at that time 15 billion rupees commission on Norochole alone. Journalists also raised the question whether there is a possibility to cancel the agreements reached by the previous government. But you know, sovereign governments have the right to break any agreement. They have the right, but uh, I don't think this government wants to do act in an ir irresponsible manner. Because if the p previous regime uh, did illegal things, I mean, they, they actually, a uh, uh, lot of these projects have been illegal. Public, public looting, pillaging of public wealth. They have signed agreements without going through accepted tender procedures. So it's illegal also. So it can very easily be cancelled, but the government is not doing that. They are trying to, you know, because it's, we don't want to affect have a, you know affect the companies that have come in they they, they are not to blame they, they are renegotiating the terms uh, trying to bring down the prices to the price that it should be when we took over the country, we believed that the debt was 7,100 billion rupees. However, it had increased to 8,900 billion rupees. What was evident was that projects had been initiated without any funds and without cabinet approval. Today, those who are with Mahindra Rajpaksa are saying that the government is bankrupt and that the government has no money. I can say that we have plenty of money. Welcome back to the news. The petition filed by All Ceylon Samurai Development and Agricultural Officers Association with the Supreme Court over the misuse of Samurai funds was taken up today. Minister Sajid Premadasa, the Prime Minister, the Cabinet and several others have been cited as respondents in this petition. The hearing of the petition was postponed to the 17th after reaching an agreement from both sides when the petition was taken up for consideration today. <laughs> 
We see Sajid Premadasi using the funds of the poor Samurdi beneficiaries to please his political associates as a misuse of funds and financial fraud. Meanwhile, Minister Sajid Premadasa presented facts to Parliament surrounding the situation that has arisen over the distribution of Samurdi funds. I would like to draw certain facts over this subject matter. Fundamental rights petition has been filed with the Supreme Court. According to the contents of Article 23 forward slash 2, I cannot make a statement on this matter at this time. I like how the ministers of the previous government who are now in the opposition behaved at courts when an issue arose back then. I like to tell Minister Nimal Siripal de Silva that I was involved in distributing funds to the people. I am deeply saddened to say that a certain group of people from the opposition is attempting to sabotage this relief program. We always provide relief. I am not afraid of anyone. I am ready to face any situation. However, I am not prepared to provide answers to political goons. A popular actress appeared in court today uh, seeking that the bank account which was frozen after revelations made by Vele Sudha uh, during interrogation be released. Responding to questions posed by Colombo Chief Magistrate Gihan Pilapitia, the actress in question said that she had no dealings with Vele Sudha. She had added that, however, she met Vele Sudha in Dubai during a tour for a concert and that he had given her money for a teledrama. She had noted that the money was handed over to a teledrama director and was not aware of what happened to the money thereafter. Speaking in court, the actress said that the money in the bank account under her name are money deposited by her and her brother and that none of Vele Sudha's money was deposited in the account. She said that income generated through acting was deposited in the account and that due to the court order she had no means of carrying out her day-to-day -day transactions. The actress and officials of the Criminal Investigations Department will be summoned to court on the 19th of this month in order to reach a decision on the matter. Chief guests who arrived for an event to place the vertex on the Sri Purva Ramachaita in Karagura Yakkalamulla met with an unfortunate incident during the ceremony. Deputy Speaker of Parliament Chandima Virakodi and Parliamentarian Ramesh Patrina were among those present. They had boarded a crane along with the incumbent of the temple and after the placing of a vertex, they were unable to get back on the ground as the crane was stuck in a manner where it could not be brought back down. The locals were compelled to call for a very tall ladder in order to bring down the three trapped persons. During this time, repairs on the heavy vehicle commenced and after around an hour, the Thero climbed down the ladder with the deputy speaker climbing down the ladder thereafter. When MP Ramesh Patrian was preparing to climb down the ladder, the malfunctioned crane began to work once again and the MP was lowered to the ground with ease. Three people were killed in a motor accident which took place in a Ranwala Kegol during the early hours today. The accident was the result of a collision between a tipper truck and a lorry. According to the police, the accident took place when the tipper truck, which was travelling from Colombo to Kegol, had swerved to its right to avoid running over two people who were in the middle of the road and had collided into a lorry travelling in the opposite direction. At around 3.50 in the morning, we heard screams of someone saying that a vehicle left them and went. For a while, we thought that someone on the road was on a phone call. A little while later, when I looked, a lorry coming from Colombo collided with another. When I came outside, there were two people dead in the middle of the road. The driver of the lorry was in a serious condition. When we came out, two people were already dead. They had lost a lot of blood. We cannot figure out if they were hit by the vehicle or not. Both were in the middle of the road. The police said that the two persons who were on the road and the driver of the lorry were killed in the accident. The driver of the tipper truck and the assistant of the lorry were hospitalized with injuries. 
Meanwhile, two people who were injured in a motor accident which occurred on the Chilau Colombo Main Road in the Katuneri area this afternoon are receiving treatment at the Maravilla Base Hospital. The accident was a result of a private bus flying from Nigampo to Chilau colliding onto a cab and a three-wheeler traveling in the opposite direction. The driver of the three-wheeler managed to save his life by jumping off just moments before the accident. The three-wheeler driver and the bus driver are receiving treatment in hospital. Fishermen of Chile claim that the importation of fish to the local market has caused a large challenge to their industry. When he was first made inquiries, Minister of Fisheries Mahinda Marvira said that he had received reports regarding the same. Certain varieties of fish that are not caught by Sri Lankan fishermen are being imported to the country for over a period of time. However, as the domestic industry was faced with challenges when local fish varieties are imported to be re-exported, the government had taken a decision to suspect this practice. However, when news first visited the Chilo fish market today, it was evident that even common fish varieties too are being imported to the local fish markets. In addition to the low prices of imported fish is also an issue faced by the fishermen in Chilo. Sri Lankan fishermen catch a certain variety of fish. There is no market for the small fish because fish are imported. We request the authorities to stop the importation of fish and ensure that jobs of the local fishermen are secured. When contacted Mahind Amarvira, the Minister of Fisheries said that he had been informed of this situation. It is clear that the fish are imported to the country without our knowledge. Copra and tuna fish are imported. It was also reported that other varieties of fish too are being imported even for the production of dried fish. We have formulated a cabinet bill and presented it to the cabinet. We will formulate a program in this regard in the future. Meanwhile, the Health Education Bureau says that the AH1N1 influenza virus is rapidly spreading across the country these days. Symptoms of AH1N1 virus are fever, headache, body ache, sore throat, cough, sneezing, and in some instances, purging and diarrhea. Make a virus, Rogia. This is a virus and it is contagious. This can spread from one person to another. On the surface, it appears to be like a normal sickness. Some others get it with purging and diarrhea. Sometimes one can contract it with all these symptoms or not. In the past month or two, the virus has spread and is being reported more than usual. A number of deaths too have been reported. However, most people who contract this virus are cured quite easily. It is said that expectant mothers, children below the age of two and persons above the age of 65 are more likely to fall victim to the virus. There is a large tendency for children under the age of two, children with low immunity as well as expected mothers to fall victim to this disease. If persons who are above the age of 65 have contracted such viruses, there is a possibility for them to have bad side effects from this virus. Consult a doctor and wash your face and hands often. It is very important that within the first 24 hours since the symptoms are diagnosed that you, con that you consult a doctor and obtain necessary treatment. Steps to be taken to prevent the contraction of the virus are avoid crowded public places, wash your hands frequently using soap, avoid touching your nose and mouth with your hands. If you have already contracted the virus, consume a nutritious diet, consume a lot of fluids, take plenty of rest. The 117th anniversary of the proclamation of Philippine independence was celebrated today. An event was organized in line with the country's National Day at Independence Square. Bye. The 117th anniversary of Philippine independence was celebrated with the participation of Philippine nationals residing in Sri Lanka. 
The message of the President of the Republic of Philippines, Benigno Esaquino III, was delivered by Honorary Consul Hugh Srial Disanayaka. We are reminded that ours is a democracy, earned through the valiant sacrifices of our predecessors and relentlessness, pursuit of peace, development and solidarity. Though the tides of the fate have brought us to different shores, our rallying cry resonate with the same dream for our countrymen, an inclusive, progressive nation. And on Sports First Night, it's cricket. An impressive spell by spinner Zulfikar Barber restricted Sri Lanka cricket president's 11 for 241 runs in the first innings. On day two of the three-day practice match between the touring Pakistan side, the SLSC president's 11, Kaushal Silver amazed country, beg your pardon, Kaushal Silver a mass century to give some hope for the home side. At Stams, Pakistan were 27 for the loss of one wicket in their second innings. Now, Sri Lanka cricket president's 11 commenced day two with an overnight score of 44 runs. Kaushal Silva scored 101 runs at a cost of 222 deliveries, smashing four boundaries. Ubud Taranga scored 35, while skipper Dinesh Chandima was only able to score 22 runs. Zulfikar Babar, in his 21 overs, bagged six wickets for 31 runs. And Sri Lanka cricket president Silvan were bowled out for 241 runs in their first innings. Yesterday, the Pakistanis were bowled out for 247 in their first innings. Thank you.